If you're enjoying good health and wellness, wealth and richness, safety and welfare, you find comfort in your family, tranquility in your marital life, your children are obedient to you, and your affairs are favorably going well as you wish, then you are indeed relishing prosperity and bliss. That's when the test becomes great. Recognize and acknowledge Allah in times of ease and prosperity, and He will remember you in times of adversity. That's when you have to sit and prove that you're a true believer. Do not be an ungrateful slave who only knows his Lord and turns to Him during times of need and destitution. Do not be an ungrateful slave who supplicates his Lord only when afflictions befall him. Then whenever he bestows upon him a blessing, he forgets him, whom he once called upon and ascribes equals to him. Instead, accustom yourself to resort to Allah before adversities befall you. All people are good at turning to Allah during times of adversity and need. Even the Arab polytheists in the early days of Islam, the disbelievers all over the world, and the atheists throughout the history of mankind. Allah the Exalted says in Surah Al-Ankabut about them, and when they board a ship, they supplicate Allah. Sincere to Him in religion, but when He delivers them to the land, at once they associate others with Him. When I wanted goodness, I cried to Allah. He gave me the goodness. When I got it, I forgot Him. Is that fair? If you're going to be grateful, I will grant you and many other blessings in Surah Ibrahim. Allah says, If you're grateful, I will add more favors unto you. But if you show ingratitude, my punishment is terrible indeed. And if you're ungrateful, my chastisement is severe. I may take away everything I've given you. So you've got everything. And as a result of it, you start missing your salah. Your connection with Allah starts deteriorating. And then you start saying things and doing things that portrays arrogance. That ingratitude that Allah says the first thing we do we snatch away all the blessings. So you might still have the millions, but you can't sleep. You have no good relations. You're not happy. You're not content. You're just not happy. Why? Go back to supplication. Learn to raise your hands to the king of all kings, the owner who owns you, and he is closer to you than your juggler vein. All you've got to do is put your head on the ground and tell him, Oh Allah, I thank you for all the blessings you've given me. I am still your slave. Even though you've given me everything, the things I didn't ask for, but still you gave. It was reported that the Prophet ﷺ stayed up all night standing until his feet became swollen. When he was asked, Why are you doing this when Allah has forgiven all your past and future wrong actions? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, Should I not be a grateful slave? Qarun, Korah, was by today's measure of wealth a super rich tycoon in the kingdom of the pharaohs. He lived in Egypt in the time of the pharaoh. He has been mentioned that his wealth and riches was so much that its keys have been too heavy for even a group of strong men to carry. It was also said the keys of his treasures were so many, they used to be carried on 60 mules. However, he was advised by the pious men from among his people saying, do not be arrogant or conceited with riches, being ungrateful to Allah Ta'ala. Enjoy your halal and good earnings, but don't forget about the poor and needy. Share your wealth with them also. His answer to this good advice of his people was nothing but all these riches have been given to me only because of the knowledge I possess. In other words, I don't need what you have said or referred to, as Allah only gave me this, for He knew that I deserve it. 
Also, if he didn't love me, he would not grant or give me this. However, Allah the Almighty rejected his statement saying, Does he not know that Allah destroyed before him generations because of their sins and bad deeds? And they were stronger than Qarun. And they had more riches and children than him. Allah says, So he went forth before his people showing himself off with all his wealth and riches. Many interpreters mention that he went forth before his people in great luxuries. When those who were desirous of the life of the world saw him, they wished to have the same and thought to themselves, they said, what a great fortune he has. When their statement reached the ears of the godly righteous men, they said to them, woe to you. The reward of Allah is better for those who believe and do righteous deeds. Musa alayhi salam cursed Qarun. Allah the Almighty revealed to him that he has subjugated the earth to obey him. Musa alayhi salam commanded the earth to swallow up Qarun and his mansion, saying, O earth, take them. And it took them to their feet. Then again he said, take them. And it took them to their knees. Then again he said, take them. And it took them to their shoulders. Then again he said, O earth, bring their riches and treasures. They were brought until they saw them. Then Musa, peace be upon him, pointed with his hand, and they also sank into the earth. Allah says, So he caused the earth to swallow him up and his mansion. Then he had no group or party to help him against Allah, nor was he one of those who could save themselves. Imam Bukhari narrates the Prophet wasallam said, While a man was walking, wearing two-piece garment proud of himself, showing off with his hair well combed. Suddenly Allah made him sink into the earth and he will go on sinking into it till the day of resurrection. Ibn Abbas radiallahu an said, they sank into the earth till they reached the lowest portion of the earth. When the people saw what happened to Qarun and his treasures of sinking into the earth and complete destruction, those who had desired for money and position like his position the day before felt bad and thanked Allah and they said had it not been that Allah was kind to us he could have caused the earth to swallow us up also Arun's story contains a number of lessons for the faithful lesson number one one should never be arrogant over wealth knowledge or fame Allah does not like those who exult in their wealth Lesson number two, use whatever wealth Allah has given you toward earning a place in the hereafter. This is the best investment. But also do not renounce the world. Do good deeds, speak in favor of the oppressed, and do not support mischief. Allah does not love those who make mischief on earth. <clears throat> Lesson number three, do not think your status in the society is because of your knowledge or wealth. Although one often gets this mistaken impression as fact, Allah has the power to take this away in a second if He so wills. Therefore thank Allah for what He has given you and do not envy what others have. You do not know what fate awaits the others whom you admire for their wealth and who otherwise seem lucky to you. Lesson number four, Allah awards heaven exclusively to those who do not seek glory on this earth nor cause chaos. Their end is the hereafter, which is the best end. Lesson number five, never despise the poor. For indeed, they are the true inheritors of heaven. If they follow the right path and obey Allah and his prophet Muhammad and do good deeds. Heroism is not in remembering Allah, the exalted. At times of need, destitution, adversity, and distress everyone is good at that as we said before true heroism rather is in remembering him at times of prosperity showing gratitude to him for his blessings striving to earn his pleasure through good doing fulfilling his rights and adhering to the straight path he chose for you as for those who do not know their Lord except at times of adversity and forget him at times of bliss and well-being, 
Allah the Exalted rebuked their behavior and dispraised them in many verses of the Quran. Allah says in Surah Az-Zumar, and when adversity touches man, he calls upon his Lord, turning to him alone. Then when he bestows on him a favor from himself, he forgets him, whom he called upon before, and he attributes to Allah equals to mislead people from his way. Say, enjoy your disbelief for a little. Indeed, you are the companions of the fire. The Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever wishes that Allah answers his supplication during hardship and grief, let him supplicate plentifully at times of ease. If you wish that Allah, the exalted, aids you at the time of misfortune the way you like, then you should devote yourself to him in worship and obedience at the time of prosperity the way he likes. If you wish Allah to know you at the time of adversity, then you should know him at the time of blissfulness and ease. As the Prophet wasallam, may Allah exalt his mention, said, Know Allah in prosperity, and He will know you in adversity. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon our Master Muhammad wasallam. May Allah exalt His mention, His family, and His companions.